Hey Deckers, Liam here. Valve has released two Steam Deck updates across November 16 and 17, so I'm going to give you a little run over what has changed. Firstly, for those of you on the preview update channel with SteamOS 3.4, there are two small fixes. The first is that they fixed Chinese Pinyin and Zuyin input for the on-screen keyboard not functioning correctly. Sorry if I didn't pronounce those correctly, but I tried looking it up and there was loads of places doing it completely differently, so I have no idea. And they also added a workaround for an underlying Steam Proton issue causing some games, notably Vampire Survivors, to fail to actually launch. So that was a really small one. The much bigger one is the stable Steam Client update. This includes a bunch of changes that were in beta and preview, However, this is not the SteamOS 3.4 update for Stable though. This is just a client update pulling in all the changes. So over on the Steam Deck Stable client update, they have reduced client startup times for users with large game libraries, which is good for me. I've got quite a lot. Fixed an issue where launching a game would take longer to start if there was no network connection. Fixed VR flags not showing up in app details for some games. Fixed the downloads page crashing when starting in your offline mode. The downloads page now properly responds to online offline mode status. Collections view can now show more than two rows of collections and allow scrolling. They've reduced the size of the Steam client download. Fixed Bluetooth failing to turn on in gaming mode if it was disabled in desktop mode. When you go to install a game, it will now always show the install location picker if there is more than one Steam library folder, like if you have a micro SD card or an external drive, and it will automatically focus the default library folder when the dialog shows up. They added an error dialog for when the user clicks a mail to link, fixed the cancel button in the Wi-Fi password dialog for a new connection causing the current network to disconnect. And they reworked the GIFs pending page to work with the gamepad. For the docked mode, they fixed incorrect size of the main menu in docked mode with 4K displays. The virtual keyboard now has a maximum width so that it doesn't stretch to an unusable size on large screens. They set the scale for startup movies so that the top and bottom of the movie are cropped for 16 by 9 aspect ratio. In desktop mode, they fixed an issue preventing the virtual keyboard from accessing the clipboard and being unable to perform paste operations. They center the pop-up controller configurator window when viewing controller layout. And fixed circular download progress indicator being broken in the game entry list. Signing into the Steam Deck is easier now as they've added login flow that actually supports the new QR code functionality. They fixed a case where if the sign-in UI had a cache of the credentials which had become invalid, it could get stuck and not actually accept valid credentials thereafter. They also fixed an edge case in handling of invalid cache of credentials affecting re-authentication. There have been quite a few complaints recently about Steam Offline mode and login, so it's nice to see quite a few changes on that. Now we have Steam input changes. Gyro enabling, the touch option is now available to controllers which do not have capacitive touch sensors. You can move joysticks out of their dead zone to now count as a touch. All controller types can now optionally choose a Nintendo style layout that will flip the A and B, X and Y universally in Steam and in games. The Xbox Extended Features driver has been updated for Windows 11. They fixed a hang when the Amazon Lula controller rumbles on macOS. Don't know why they included those here. They fixed an issue with the touch binding in as mouse mode releasing before the end of a swipe. Fixed doubled input for Nintendo Joy-Cons controllers. Gyro, Yaw and Roll combined now allows negative contribution values from both sources. Flick stick output can now be inverted and can be sent to X or Y mouse axis. There's a fix for flick stick turning when exiting an overlay layer with the stick still thrown. Desktop controller layout now defaults to a desktop friendly set of controls. You can hold down the menu button to toggle back and forth between the gamepad friendly layout. 
This is supposed to be so that more games will actually work with the gamepad in desktop mode. And they updated the Steam Controller left back and right back button images. For remote play, they fixed glyphs for third party Nintendo controllers while streaming. And finally, this includes the updated big picture mode. So this is the game mode Steam Deck UI that is now available on desktop and on desktop mode on the Steam Deck as well. So quite a lot is new there. Do let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Help me out and I'll see you all later.